Welcome back to the channel and thank you for watching. So I'm reading all over the news that Amber Heard is making yet another attempt to overturn this jury verdict on the basis that they say that juror number 15 should not have been permitted to sit on the jury. Now, aside from the fact that juror 15 was a person along with everybody else on the jury and they followed the rules in the same way that everyone else did on the jury, I thought I would take a brief look at the motion to set aside the verdict and the specific part where they talked about juror 15, that is Amber Heard's lawyers. So I'll direct you to page 41 of the motion to set aside the verdict where they talk about juror 15. They say that the clerk's office had a statutory obligation to verify the identity of juror 15 but because juror 15 was not born in 1945 it appears his identity could not have been verified through any means of identification the code provides and it also raises the question about whether and how juror 15 could have signed a statement affirming under penalty of perjury that he was the named juror if he was 25 years younger than the person the court recognised as juror 15. Now just pausing for a moment and make sure you watch till the end of the video because there is a specific reason that I think this cannot possibly go anywhere. You'll remember Mr Alan Robertshaw and I discussed this in one of our previous live streams so uh, if you want to catch that in full you can join as a member because all of our previous live streams are in that back catalogue. Reading on, this says, although the Virginia Supreme Court has previously construed the Virginia Code 8.01 to 353, requiring the jury panel to be made available at least 48 hours before trial, to be a directory rather than mandatory, it has observed that adherence to the provisions of the code is required to the extent necessary to ensure due process. This was in Butler and Commonwealth of 2002. It therefore follows, Amber Heard's lawyers argue, that adherence to the code is necessary to ensure due process, even if it is viewed as a directory rather than a mandatory statute. Now, this, you'll notice, has a footnote number nine, and this is the point in the video where we come to where we believe this is going absolutely nowhere for the following reason. And I suggest that it can't be more compelling than this. Amber Heard's own lawyers put in the footnote the following. Miss Heard recognises that Virginia Code 801 to 353 states that any error in the information shown on the jury panel shall not be grounds for a mistrial or assignable as error on appeal. And the parties in the case shall be responsible for verifying the accuracy of such information. Therefore, we humbly suggest that any arguments that can be raised in respect of Juror 15 are not really able to go anywhere because they've already acknowledged that any error in the information shown is not grounds for a mistrial or assignable as an error on appeal. Now, whilst they do go on to argue that Juror 15 was not the same individual assigned as Juror 15 and not identified by the court clerk's office, we believe that this is not going to result in the court overturning or setting aside the verdict on that basis alone. Because if there were any objection to this juror, it should have been made at the outset. It should have been made a long time ago before the trial commenced and certainly before the jury returned the verdict. So whilst I hear this time and time again in the news that she's trying to overturn the verdict by questioning this one juror, I believe the court is going to take the view that this juror, albeit perhaps even identified incorrectly, would have sat on that jury and come to the verdict just like everybody else. The question for the court will be, is there anything to suggest that this juror did not follow the rules? Is there anything to suggest that this juror has uh, broken their oath to carry out this verdict properly? Is there anything to suggest this juror was influenced or biased or in any other way prejudiced than any other member of the jury? And I suggest not, at least if they were, that would have made its way to the news by now. 
So I firmly believe that's not the case. I believe there's going to be nothing in this argument that's going to overturn or set aside the verdict. But as always, let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd be interested to read those comments and perhaps now that I'm down here, I'll be doing a live stream with uh, Alan Robertshaw Esquire very soon and we can discuss this very point with you on a live stream and take your questions. So leave those questions there. Make sure you join as a member so you can see our previous live streams in the back catalogue. And as always, thank you for watching.